Hello everybody, my name is Ronnie Trocker. I am a writer and director of the film Human Factors, playing in the panorama section of this year's Berlinale. It's a film about the decomposition of a family, I would say, and yes, I would be happy if you can watch it soon online or in the cinema. Thank you very much. Könnt ihr mal aufmachen? Was ist denn los? Es waren Leute im Haus. Du blutest ja. Weil es rien. Aber wie ist das passiert? Ich habe mich nur am Türrahmen gestoßen. Wie das? Jemand hat eine Tür zurückgeknallt und ich habe mich erschrocken. Ein kleiner Typ. Und die sind weggerannt. Aber wie sollen die denn hier reingekommen sein? Verdammt. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jombor Bobak, and we're going to discuss the film Human Factors with director Ronnie Trocker. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. Um, it's very nice to have you here with us. Hello. Um, can you tell us about your inspiration to this film? Like, what drove you to tell this story? Uh, well, I think there were two topics, maybe. Uh, there was one topic was the idea of, of, of family, what can it be family, and uh, all the conflicts uh, which came with the idea of, of the concept of family. Uh, mm, and the other topic was probably my concern about perception and a little bit how yeah. how nowadays, especially uh, in this area of, of social, me social media or massive media consumption, we are right. perceiving the world around us. So it's more a question, it's or an observation. Uh, I was wondering how it how it is changing, how how we build reality and how we build through yes. in in these times. Now we have this multiplication of perspectives, and so right. and so yeah, all this is shown in this microcosmos of this of this family. Yeah, can you tell us a bit more about this uh, play with perspectives in the movie because that's a very integral part how you structured the narrative yeah actually it, 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 I, I didn't start with the idea to uh, to tell uh, the story about f uh, from from p uh, different p uh, point of views uh, but during writing of course you you ask yourself in a certain moment uh, from which point of view you tell a story which is a, a fundamental uh, question for every st uh, storyteller actually and so I started to play around a little bit, and I, I wrote the same scenes uh, from another point of view. So every family member actually had a. Uh, mm, I wrote the same scene from 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 yeah. the point of view of every uh, family member. So it started to to I started to like the idea, the formal idea, especially uh, because I was I was so interested in perception, and so yes. the idea how how uh, an event can look differently when you see it from another point of view. So actually, yeah, the film is turning around uh, this this supposed house breaking, yeah. and actually, the, the the what's happening is never changing. But the 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 audience should have the possibility to experience it f through the eyes of different characters. So yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a bit it's a bit complicated, but it's complicated times. So <laughs> it's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You also play a lot with uh, time. It's not a linear narrative. Um, so what was your idea behind, um, I don't know, like playing with, with the temporal aspects of the film? Well, actually, when you decide to tell a, a, a scene from different point of views, uh, uh, you have to, to, to come back in time. So it, it's not, I don't call them really flashbacks, but it's, and, and I think the audience is not, immediately aware of of, yeah, of, of of that we are in another moment. I, I like the idea that, that somehow the, the chronological aspect of time is less important than the feelings or what, hap what happens to the character. So it's, yeah. it's like timeless, it's a situation more than a, a chronological order of, of events. Yeah. And so it's a bit an experiment, of course, that uh, how, is it possible that we forget about time? I mean, there are of course there are a lot of films who who play with it and then uh, yeah I wanted to try it a little bit yeah 
Well, the, in the middle of the film, there is this family that from a first look, it really seems like that this is like a very perfect family. Everything is going very well for them. But then um, very quickly, we start to realize that their perfection or this reality that they try to project is very fragile at the, at the end of the day. Um, there is one particular scene in the film which takes place in this office where the two main characters work together and it's attacked. Um, I thought that was a very nice and representative scene of how tensions are underlying this relationship. Can you tell us a bit about how you choreographed that scene and, and what was um, the significance of, of the scene in, in the film? Well, uh, yes, the scene is its almost like a metaphor because actually we don't really explain from where this attack comes. Exactly. So, of course, as you said, this is this postcard family, you know, everything, uh, middle, upper class, everything looks so perfect. And they have, of course, a kind of high demand of personal security and and personal or, or economical security. So basically, they don't think that everything, anything can wrong, but. Uh, but uh, that, that's 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 also the the idea of how this how the the situation out out of this private uh, uh, safe space uh, mm, can influence or small events like the the house breaking or like this attack uh, uh, can just uh, um, be a triggering element of 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 unmasking the inner conflicts actually yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it was important for me not to not to explain, not to go into the possible thriller of who was the attacker, because I right. mean, as you know, there was a they are related with a political a big West political exactly. party, and could it be related with this? But I think it, it I think it's interesting, but uh, it's it was not my main interest. So. It was, I think, the mystery also. It's important, no, that you don't yeah, explain sure. it every, everything. So the attack remains there, and it's a kind. It could also be an imagination of the character because he feels attacked in Absolutely. his life model, also in his ideal. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I mean, this whole tension is like a very important part and like a driving force um, of your narrative. But what I was really wondering about is um, um, the family um, and family as a concept, family as an institution, which is really also at the heart of, of the film and you're also investigating um, the dynamics uh, of this family in the film. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I, I was un I, I interested in this, um, in this unmasking process. Now we are kind of, they, they, they represent something like a, a, a model family, yeah. but Actually, it's a facade, of course. No, yeah. and especially I think, and I mean, their job it's uh, to 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 do advertising. So they are building facades the whole yeah. time, and they are communicators, and they are it's a kind of marketing. And I think also with social media, we, we are a permanent marketing from ourselves. We are trying to show ourselves sure. somehow. Yes. And so I was I was interested in in unmasking this or deconstructing this ideal family. You know this this idea of, 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 of everything is, is working well and yeah. but uh, but it is also of course a film about communication no and when you see that behind the facade they are not able to yeah to 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 communicate bet between each other they are stuck in their bubble but they to the outside they communicate the, the, the postcard oh sorry yeah, the postcard sorry. and uh, and uh, yeah I was interested to, to have this look behind the, the facade actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about the the technical aspects of the film. I thought it was very interesting that the camera is quite restless, like it's it's very much moving around all the time. Um, what was your approach to the to the to the visual um, aesthetic of the film? Well, we with the with the DOP uh, Clemens Hufnagel, it's, it's our second collaboration, so we we we, we do always a lot of preparation yeah. and we we. We, mm, there is a, a really elaborated uh, visual concept, uh, and we thought uh, we 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 planned uh, the 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 camera as a as a almost as a character as another character yeah. in the room. So it's a kind of uh, 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 um, an invisible observer, 
and in a really privileged position. So the camera actually is never in a place where a human being couldn't be. So there's no yeah. drone yeah. from, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a drone, but uh, it's seen from a, from yeah. a control remote. Uh, so uh, the idea is really like to be with, to, 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 to be closer to the characters and to, yeah, to experience this, this, this point of this perspective uh, yeah. element. So we follow the characters. It's like when you are, yeah, it's like to Im we imagine it like we are in a room with them and they don't see us and we are just, yeah. Uh, it's a bit voyeuristic, of course, but it's, it's, it, I think it's, it was important to, to get this feeling of changing of perspective. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, can you tell us about the editing process? Because that's obviously a very crucial point, especially with a film that's so puzzle-like. It really can um, complement the film. It really can derail the the narrative. Um, so yeah, what was how how was the editing process going? So I mean, the structure was almost the same as it was written already. Yeah. So um, and of course we. We, we we didn't have so much material that we could change it uh, completely because uh, as everybody we didn't have enough time to shoot and so i mean you yeah. just shoot the, the necessary things and um so the editing process was basically finding the balance the balance and what you to play with the, the informations you give uh, 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 especially in, uh, informations about time in, in yeah. or about places uh, or timeline, uh, especially. So um, it was. It's it's tricky because it's somehow we were looking for to. Uh, so we were try to 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 have the audience always um, uh, have a kind of active audience. You know that they really need to be yeah. always uh, at, uh, really active observers of yes. this. So when you give too much information, they they fall asleep, <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, so it's always to play with it. It's risky because, of course, some of course. people may be frustrated because they don't get all the answers they they expecting. But sure. yeah, it was a, uh, a work on the balance of 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 how much information we give away and how much yeah. information we we keep or give it later. So yeah. it's, and that's tricky because uh, actually you could never end this process. Yeah. So we... Yeah, absolutely. And then also rhythm comes in because you have to have a rhythm where you give away certain things, but then you pull back. And yeah, that was also, yeah, of course, of course. That was also an interesting yeah. dynamic to see. Um, you, uh, the film also operates with uh, some queer characters in it. Uh, why was it important for you to include these characters and how did you approach their representation? Uh, um, but it was important for me because I think it should it should be completely normal that there are queer characters in the film without being the main topic. I mean, yeah. so... Uh, um, and it was important for me because uh, I, I wanted to show also to have another idea of family. I mean, there's always a part of family we choose, uh, uh, yeah. a, a part of family we can't choose, or we can't choose our parents or our siblings, but we can choose our partners. And so, actually, it's the other model of a family, it's the brother and his, his the brother of the 
wife and 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 his boyfriend and they and it's also a, a, a working relationship so they're freshly yeah. in love yes they're connected so they are the complete opposite actually what our main characters are which are not communicated uh with each other any uh, anymore yeah. so yeah it's kind of have this contrast was important for me and yes as i said at the beginning i think it's important to have to represent uh, queer char characters uh, also yeah. without being um, no, no need to be the main subject i mean yeah yeah absolutely um finally let's uh, talk a bit about the title of the film uh, human factors what did you want to refer to with this and what was the idea behind it? Yeah, it the title was a long journey because we had another working with another working title then we when we got our first festival invitation we changed the title yeah. and during the uh, process uh, working on the catalog we changed it another <laughs> so it was <laughs> it was hard because it's actually it's a movie who could uh, the movie has so many layers so it's not one theme so it was really difficult to, f to to agree that everybody agrees on the title so human factors is uh, human factor it's the, the the possibility of human error actually mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. something you can't calculate or it's yeah. always that or you calculate it because it's the possibility of yeah. human error because it's always in the it's cards. always <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so it's a bit a reference to their to the human being in general we are not perfect of course luckily and of course it's a little bit of a reference to the fifth point of view which is yeah. the point of view of a non-human in the film yes uh, exactly and ironically it's the only one who really knows what happens in this house in this supposed housebreaking so yeah it's a bit an ironic game of yeah, a bit on, on on this on this on this fifth perspective actually yeah but Ronnie, thank you so much for being here with us and um, I wish you all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me and hopefully in June yes, in the real cinema. Yeah, let's <laughs> hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>